Most people are aware of Howard Gardner's work on what he called multiple intelligences. And the idea is that human beings have, it's, it, it's at least six and probably close to a dozen or even two dozen different capacities, different types of intelligence. So we have cognitive intelligence, we have moral intelligence, there's a musical intelligence, a mathematical intelligence, a kinesthetic or athletic, uh, artistic, and so on. And so on, on the bottom there, I have cognitive, interpersonal, moral, musical, I put worldviews in, kinesthetic and values. Those are just some of the types of capacities that we have, intelligences that we have in ourselves right now. And what we find is that most people excel in some and not in others. So some people can be very good cognitively, but they're not good at you know, music playing, for example. But it, the important point is that it's what we call levels and lines, and you really can be quite highly developed in some and not very well developed in others. Sometimes that's a problem, sometimes it's not, but it really has to be taken into account. What we find is that these are the things that develop through stages. The simplest one for moral I put in the middle, which is egocentric, ethnocentric, world-centric, and cosmocentric. Moral development, um, according to um, both male and female researchers, Lawrence Kohlberg to Carol Gilligan, tends to go through three or four major stages of unfolding. Technically, they're called pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. But what they mean is egocentric, ethnocentric, and world-centric. A young child starts out and can't, a young child can have a great deal of love and, and feeling and warmth, but can't take the role of other until around age seven. Cognitively can't actually put themselves in the shoes of somebody else. So their moral sense tends to be centered on their own wishes and desires. A young child, for example, will mumble and think that everybody understands him. He'll hide he'll, uh, under a pillow in plain daylight thinking now nobody can see him. This is a sort of uh, narcissistic worldview that is, is, tends to be the first stage of a lot of these developmental sequences. And as we grow, we increasingly learn to take larger and larger views of others. And so this capacity for moral sense expands from I want what's right just for me to I want what is right for my group. It's often my family first, or that it's my tribe, or it's my nation. And incidentally, about 70% of the world's population never gets higher than that, than the ethnocentric level of development, which is one of the real, real problems. But if development continues, it moves into post-conventional or world-centered, and it's, I want what's right for all human beings, regardless of race, color, creed, and so on. Now, obviously, some uh, it's one thing to believe those values. It's another thing to make sure that they're actually put into action in the real world, and that's a whole other issue. But it's not until people get to the post-conventional world-centered levels of development that they can even conceive of that. So obviously what we want, if we want a better world, is not just how to introduce people into states, no matter how deep or profound, let's say even a big mind state. We want to help people get from egocentric and ethnocentric to world-centric. And so we want to look at the stage component of this as well, in individuals as well as in the culture at large.